We just found a way to make our basement storage even better. We're sitting on it. We're gonna to get to some of those upgrades in just a minute. But as we mentioned a couple of videos ago, we were recently in Elkhart, Indiana, not only working with our friends at Grand Design RV, but meeting with some new partners of ours too. That's right, we've partnered with More Ride, who has given us some really cool products to try out and show you guys. Before we get into showing you the cool basement upgrades that we got, we wanna show you a couple of other things that More Ride wanted us to try out. Yeah, there are a couple of things that are stock now on the TH models of Momentums. We wanted to try those out so we can speak to them a little bit better when you ask us about them. First up, boom, right here. <laughs> We're mooch docking in my brother's driveway and it's got quite a slope to it. So the steps look a little bit funny right now yeah, because well, we had to get some, some additional supports underneath. We had to jack the nose up quite a bit so our stairs are off the ground. Yeah. Very unusual situation here, but we handled it. So anyhow, it. that's what the wood underneath the steps is all about. Yeah. A little history on our steps. Our RV was built in 2017, even though it was a 2018 model, and it came with the Lippert solid step. Now that step had no like strut assist or anything at the time. So about a year and a half ago, we reached out to Grand Design to see if we could try out the new thing, which was the Moride step above. Particularly because of me. Yeah. Because I was struggling to lift up the, the first set of steps that we had because they mm -hmm. were very heavy. So the steps that Grand Design sent us about a year and a half ago were so much easier for me to use. Mm -hmm. And I could truly just use a couple of fingers and lift the steps up and down. So it was awesome. Right. And they've made a few improvements between the first generation and the second generation. And the second generation is what we've got right now. This is a bit of a preview because these aren't out yet for the general public. But they are coming yeah. on Momentums in the near future. Right, and the TH line for sure, we're not sure about the other lines. So let's just show you what's so cool about these steps. It's okay, Daisy. You're not, nothing's going on, she's all scared. Daisy, I know this is weird. Hey, <laughs> hey Daisy, sit. Good girl, girl. girl, you stay. So this is the coolest part about these steps. You can lift them up. They pretty much just stay. They, it's very, very light because you've got the hydraulic assist over there. So this is kind of a one finger operation. The thing that's new about this particular step between generation one and generation two is one, you've got a much bigger top step up here. One of the things that's really cool is this new trigger release. The old system, you had to take a pin out, move it a notch, put a pin in, and it was a constant, oh, let's put a pin in, test it, take a pin out, move it, test it. This new system just goes like this. And it's a real simple trigger mechanism here. So when you get to a new site and you're setting up, you can just push the trigger and drop them down, lock them in, so easy I can do it very easily and I don't know if you showed them this cool handle here yeah that handle is uh, much easier to use when you're not on a yeah driveway with a five degree slope yeah short <laughs> people like me on a slope like this I had to stand on my toes but normally I don't have to you may also notice that there are a couple of screw mount points here. That's for an integrated handrail, so you can have a handrail built into this that just folds right up with it, but it's solid and attached right here. Chad actually installed these himself. Yeah, they were not that difficult. I installed both the first generation that we received and these. They have a tool online that will help qualify you for the proper step for your RV, so be sure to check that out. For us, it was pretty straightforward. Uh, the things to watch out for, You've got your strut assist right here, so you want to have room for that. I had to move our fire extinguisher up a little bit because it was in the way. The other thing is it's got a little bit of a block over here, and I had to make a little notch in our stairs for that to fit, which I had to make a little bit bigger for this step, <laughs> which I'm going to fill today, we'll, so we'll show you that.
that qualifying tool that he just mentioned, we will put a link for that in the description below so you can get to it easily and you can check out for yourself what steps that you need. The next thing we want to show you is right over here. First, we got to lock Daisy down. Oh, <laughs> she's on lockdown. So boom, this is the next thing we're going to talk about right here. This is the Moride rubber pin box. Da, da, da. <laughs> so why did we get a new pin box? <laughs> well, if you watched our to know and toolbox video or our hitching video, you know that we used to have the Lippert Flex Air. And the Flex Air was a great pin box. We had no problems with it other than its ginormity. It's big. It's got the big airbag and the shock and the rubber thing. And that caused a bit of a problem with our to no cover rails. We could only get to about a 45 or 50 degree turn before it was actually hitting and tearing up our rails. Yeah, I gotta stop you for a second. Okay. Tenno, tano, <laughs> tomato, tomato. We got a lot of criticism yeah. on the way that we pronounce tonneau. tonneau cover. So we looked it up. You can pronounce it either way. It's We're sorry. We're sorry. Yeah, <laughs> it's a preference thing. So anyway, our tonneau cover rails do extrude into the bed just a little bit. So having that really long pin box caused some problems because as we would turn, we could only get about 45 or 50 degrees before the back of our pin box back here was actually hitting the tonneau rails. Yeah. So we were already kind of trying to think about something different to do in this arena and we were at Moride, so why not? And while Moride was installing the new pin box on our RV, Jack took us on a tour of that particular facility, which was awesome because I had yeah, no idea got, what to expect. From yeah, it. we got to see how these are built. I mean, they fabricate these things. They bend the metal. They got freaking lasers mm -hmm. and all kinds of cool stuff. But we're going to show you a little bit about the tour of Moride in just a minute. Mm -hmm. But Jack was explaining to us a little bit about the pin box as we walked through the tour. So it was kind of cool to yeah. get that information. Yeah. And so the way this rubber works is it moves back and forth three inches and one and a half inches side to side. And before the normal stock pin box was rigid. Yeah. So now we make it flexible. And again, the action we concentrate on is back and forth because when you come to a stop sign, right. when you accelerate, when you get on those highways, the expansion joints, you start going back and forth, back and forth. So like you said, this thing has three inches of movement this way and an inch and a half of movement this way. Any kind of pin box that has some shock absorption that isolates movement between your fifth wheel and your hitch and your truck can reduce chucking. Chucking is when you've got that right. back and forth and your truck and your RV are kind of fighting. This really reduces that quite a bit. It's a really smooth tow. And so far it's been great as far as being able to turn and clear yeah. the bed rails, right? Right, that was one of the things that we tested right away once we got this new pin box on. By my calculations and measurements, looking at things online, I think it shaved about an inch and a half or two inches off the length between the pin and the back of the pin box. Yeah, I mean, I don't often get further than this. So we were hoping that it would clear it a little bit better and it did. That was one of these things that we didn't notice immediately after. It took a few sharp turns to realize, oh, when we turn sharp, it's hitting. Yeah, you still got... You still okay. okay. Yeah. You can see before it was hitting way back here. Right, right. And we've done several toes with it now. We can get a good probably 75 or 80 degree turn, mm -hmm. which is plenty for most things. You very rarely need to go to 90 yeah. degrees. A lot of you have asked about the Reese Goose Box, and also some of you have brought out the new Gen Y Goose Box conversion. We'd love to try those. Right now, Reese is working on a 27K model of their Goose Box. We may try that out when they actually come out with it. Currently, they have a 20K model, and I just don't like being that close on numbers. Mm -hmm. Also, Gen Y has some really neat things we're seeing coming out of both their hitches and their gooseneck conversion kits. But right now, they're not certified with the Lippert frame. So you gotta be cognizant of that when you're looking at a new pin box for your fifth wheel, you have to take into account, is that pin box certified with the frame because you can void your warranty. Right. Also, these are now stock on all Grand Design Momentum TH models. I'm not sure about the M class and G class, but I know they are on the TH models. And maybe the solitude lines as well? Yeah, and I think maybe some of the higher end solitudes, mm -hmm. some of the heavier solitudes. We've only made a couple of trips now with this new pin box. So far, it's really great. There's no chucking, there's no interaction going on between the truck and the RV, so it's been good. The biggest benefit for us is definitely that it's a little bit smaller package and doesn't interfere with our tonneau rails. Additionally, it doesn't require any extra maintenance. Our Lippert did require, you know, checking the airbag pressure and things like that. So this is pretty much maintenance free. 
Before we get into the basement organization modifications that we had done, we want to show you a little bit of that tour that we mentioned that Jack took us on of part of the Moor Ride facility, which was a really cool experience for us. Freaking lasers. <laughs> Freaking lasers, man. <laughs> If you didn't know about Moride, they've actually been around since 1966. Mm -hmm. And they got their start building suspension systems for, I believe he was saying, low boy trailers. And that's how they got their start. And now they are a multiple plant facility with multiple campuses throughout Elkhart County. And they have over a thousand employees and it's just massive now. And they do so many different products. Yeah, it was really neat being able to see their campus there and all the different machinery they use. You know, I love tools and gadgets. Mm -hmm. They had robots bending metal and lasers <laughs> and welding and robot laser welding. And it was just really cool. <laughs> so we asked Jack about what percentage of their business is done with the RV industry versus some of the other industries that they work with. And he said it's about 75 to 80 percent RV industry. And then the rest is a combo of agricultural, I think mass transit. Yeah, they do a lot of buses and things like that. Yeah, even they some military. Take, yeah, and they actually take a lot of uh, stock chassis and extend them and do think modifications like that. The campus that we walked through was apparently the main campus for Moride. And the cool thing is that's where the independent suspension is done. And we're excited about that. Yeah. We're going back up there in November for some independent suspension. So we'll have that for you later in the year. We are super pumped about that. Super pumped. Ooh, that's pretty. Independent suspension and disc brakes. Yes. One part that I really enjoyed was when we got to the sales and retail section of the campus where they have a bunch of their cool little products mm -hmm. set up in a, a retail display. The and whole it's where, showroom. Yeah, and it's where they take their OEM customers and retail customers in to show them some of the other products that they have available that like I didn't know that they offered. Didn't have a clue. Right, so they do some suspension products. They have those cool little bar stools that we saw. They make all kinds of TV mounts. So if somebody doesn't have an outdoor TV built into their RV, you could put something in the basement. Yep. And so if they wanted to sit outside, they would just fold it down. That's cool. So you could buy a mount that has two of these and put one indoors in yeah. the bedroom and one outdoors. And now when you leave, you just take it off. They also had a lot of cool stuff for Jeeps that I had no clue. They, right, they had all knew? kinds of like cooler solutions and storage and racks. Jack mentioned, you know, Jeeps don't really have storage. So they wanted to yeah. come up with some ways to add some storage solutions for Jeeps, which our friends Tom and Sheree might want to look into. <laughs> yeah, say that. It's pretty cool. They also showed us some outdoor kitchens, some cool storage solutions for if you replace your fold out steps with something like the step above. Right. You can use that for storage down below. Because that'll that'll often leave people with just this big open area, might as well use it for storage, right? Yeah. So they came up with a solution for that. So it was just neat to walk around and see some of the other things that they have available. Yeah, a lot more than I thought. Yeah. So you guys ready to see our favorite upgrade that we got while we were there? Yeah. You know, I love organizing and stuff, so this is really cool. Yes. If you have a toy hauler or a fifth wheel and even a lot of class A, class C RVs, they don't often come with slide out trays for basement storage. And that's something that we've always wished we had. Yeah, so let's just show you. This is really freaking cool. So we've got two trays in here. This first one is a 26 by 90. Now, the cool thing about this is it goes all the way across. So look how far this comes out. 60% extension. And it will go out the opposite direction mm -hmm. as well. All of the 90 inch trays like this are designed to go out both directions. This particular one is a 90 by 26. Obviously you're gonna to have to do some measuring if you wanna do something like this and you can do any kinds of weird combinations. This one is also rated for 800 pounds. Yeah, all of the trays that are designed to extend out 60% are rated for 800 pounds, which is a lot. 
So we've got this guy that goes out both directions. We'll show you on the other side also. We've got the black stone still in here. Usually we take this out and set this up with camp, but since we're mooch docking here, and we're not gonna leave it in the driveway. Well, we're gonna take it out and show them. Yes. I want a steak tonight anyhow. Yeah. <laughs> Under this is my workbench that I used to have against the wall. So the cool thing about this is, is when I have this out and set up and I need a workbench, I just slide this out and I can work right here. Of course, I can pull this out and stand it up on its own, but I got my tools available here. All my stuff accessible right here. I can work on stuff. On the other side here, this is a 20 by 60. Also a 60% extension and also 800 pound rated. So the thing I like about this is before I would have to really climb over this tub to get to this tub, now I can just slide it out and just get right in here. Moride installed this one for us while we were there. And Chad actually put that one in himself because he wanted to see how easy or difficult it was to do it yourself for those right. DIYers out there. I also had to make some modifications to our basement area to get this to fit in because if you have a toy hauler or trailer like this where you've got a wide section and a skinny section and then they join in the middle, usually there's an angle wall there. Well, that angle wall, there's actually more space back there. So I took that angle wall out. I moved our water pump and I moved our ATS back so that I could square that off. Otherwise, this would not have fit. A little note about the installation of these. A lot of fifth wheels and trailers like ours do have it kind of a little lip right here, so it can be difficult to line these up and get them to where they slide out. So they do make a kit with legs that extend between, between 1.6 and I think 3.1 inches mm -hmm. so that you can lift it up a little bit so that when you slide it out, it can clear the bottom of this. Actually, that little bit of gap right here lets me kind of set things along here. I can stash things like our, our screen for our awning. The same lip kind of exists on the sides here, so you want to be careful when you measure that out. But even with that, it's pretty convenient. You'll notice that I've got like a little hammer over here. I've got our, the knee pad. I've got our little extension stool. I've been able to keep some of the things that I stored along the edges anyway, and now they're just held in. And we did get a lot of people asking about this. Oh yeah. So I thought you might want to tell them a little bit about your little MacGyver situation. I got really tired of the drills and impact wrenches and all that just floating around. I kept having to move them. So I saw this on Pinterest actually. It's pretty straightforward. This is just a three inch PVC and a four inch PVC. And then I just took the Dremel tool and cut out sliders for the, ha for the handles here. And a simple bungee that holds them in when we travel. But this way I've got all of these things quickly available right up here and out of the way. I just took some self-tapping screws and screwed them right to the frame. You'll notice this one, I, I, after I did it, I had to go with a recessed because, oh, it, because it was too tight, it wouldn't go in there. Yeah, other people have asked about this oh, yeah, too. Yeah. Yeah. You wanna tell them about that? Yeah, some of you have asked about how I mount this. If you look on the back of these, they've got mounts like this. So it's just a matter of putting a couple of screws in here. Mm -hmm. Doesn't really matter what kind. That's your charger. This is the charger for the DeWalt. Mm -hmm. And it just pops right on there. Yes. Behind the wall back there, we already had an unused outlet from our converter. If you don't have an outlet, maybe I'll find something. And I know there's like outlet wires running here, but I just ran the wire back there and plugged it in. Okay. I also have plugged into that same outlet, our e-bike chargers. The chargers just sit behind the wall and these hang out here. There's enough room for me to stash our e-bike batteries between the wall and the tray. And we can't wait to tell you guys yeah. about our e-bikes. <laughs> yeah. We're just filming a couple more rides so that we can really get used to them before mm -hmm. we show you. And as far as the rest of the organization here, it's not that bad. I mean, it's not super complicated. I've got like our little shovel here and it's just a little Velcro strapping that down, got our mm -hmm. ax. The trays do require you to kind of rethink your storage a little bit, because obviously you, you can't just put stuff across both trays if you're gonna use two trays. 
you know, another option. We could have went with a tray that was the whole width and just went halfway across. So it's really up to you which, how you want to organize and how you want to do it. Yeah, you can really customize it. Yeah. The reason I really like this is, let's just go where I'll show you. Okay. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Pretty cool. <laughs> so I can get to all of my tubs here. I can get to both of my buckets for my different hoses. There's lots of room down in the slots down here for miscellaneous stuff. Our extension cords are now in the rear tub up there. I didn't have them there before because it was so hard to get to. Now that I can get to it easily, I just put them in the tub. Very simple. Very cool. They make these trays in really just two different kinds. The 60%, which is the kind that we have that will extend 60%. And they also make 80% trays, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> but, you can't put as much weight on the 80% trays, right, right? Exactly. Those are ready for 500 pounds because obviously you're extending them much further. Additionally, these 60% trays will come in a variation all the way from 20 inches to 52 inches wide and anywhere between 36 to 90 inches deep. And again, it's the 90 inch models that can extend both directions. The 500 pound 80% models are only 72 inches long. They do range in width between 20 inches and 52 inches. So those are really gonna be probably more for your class A's where you've got one coming out one side, but it's really wide. Mm -hmm. We got to see some massive class A trays when we were doing our oh, tour. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of you are thinking, how do we get that? <laughs> exactly, exactly. There are a few ways that you can do it really. Yeah, obviously online is one. Now we'll have some links below, but keep an eye on those links because they're gonna change. Currently you can get a lot of these on Amazon and we'll have links for that. Mm -hmm. Like all of our videos that are about these types of topics, always look down below, whether you're on our website, through our blog, or whether you're on YouTube, look down in the description. We'll always keep updated information down there, and this is no different. We'll keep the links down below updated so you know how to get these things. Right. In addition to being able to find some of these products online, you can also check with a dealer because many dealerships offer some of these products, and we will put a link for a dealer locator mm -hmm. down below as well. Right, and of course they can install it for you also. Mm -hmm. The third way that you can get some of these products installed is actually directly with Moride. Mm -hmm. Now that's more of a one-stop shop, do it all there together. They'll measure it for you, they'll get you the right product and they'll install it. Now you can't go buy these online and take them to Moride. You can't buy them at Moride and take them home. This is just for their full service kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And it's also just in Elkhart. So you gotta go to Elkhart for that. <laughs> but hey, if you're gonna be in that area anyhow, yeah. It's a one-stop shop. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll put contact information down below as well for more rides so that you can get in touch with them if you want to set something up. That's it with the upgrades that we're going to show you right now. We do have more exciting things coming up mm -hmm. that we're working on. And like we mentioned, the independent suspension in a couple of months. So yep. that will be really awesome. And then some things for probably not until 2021 mm -hmm. because there's a lot of details to work out. But just some really exciting things in the future. Daisy could do it. It's so easy. Put stairs down, Daisy. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Stay there. No. Oh. Like, it looks like a little Tom and Jerry mouse hole. <laughs> it does. I'm probably going like cringing when you're talking a little <laughs> bit because of all the car noise. You know, an ex. Well, that was a bug right in my eye. This is up a lot higher than it was at Moride, where I just climbed right in. Yeah. I, I think I want to get the taller steps through. Oh, no, just, it's just, just turn around, put your butt in there. Just, you'll see. It just feels like it's out of here. If it breaks, I can fix it. Yeah, it can break. If it breaks, I break. Okay. See? It's like a ride. Here they go. That, um... Hey, you going out there? Oh, no, the odd scares me, dude. Yeah. <laughs> the things we do. <laughs> you want to see Daisy again? <laughs> Puppy dog. What do you think? What do you think? I don't like filming day. I don't like it. Say bye everybody. Bye bye.
<laughs> yes, I know. I know. Video's over, people. Go home. They're probably home. <laughs> Go watch our next video. Click on this. Bossy. But he's right. Yeah.